Hi everyone, today I want to talk about how to take charge of your health and longevity. Now a lot of people say, oh, there's nothing you can do. Your genes tell you how long you're going to live and how healthy you're going to be. To which I say, genes do not determine destiny. There is so much that you can do to improve your health and feel better. And as you reduce the stress when you feel better, it's amazing how many years it can pack onto your life. So I just want to share with you how much being healthy has really helped in recovery. Now, if you've watched many of my videos, you know I talk about how leading a vegan, or modern word, more modern phrase, is plant-based, but it's vegan. And living this lifestyle, eating this way, I have talked so much and shared so many stories about how some of my vegan friends have run races, especially half marathons with me, when we've been able to do it together, which is such a cool thing. And how we aren't like our meat-eating colleagues who are walking around the next day with so much soreness. It doesn't mean that you don't get delayed onset muscle soreness, which is intense muscle pain that can happen anywhere from 24 to 72 hours out from doing some extensive and intensive exercise. But the recovery is so much faster and we all have seen how this has happened. So what does that mean when you get to be 71 like I am now? Well, just eight weeks ago, I tripped over a fire hose that was coming out of a swimming pool and was positioned way too close to the entrance of this pool where I was going to do a swim meet after I had just finished placing first in my age group at a 5K race. Had my gym bag with me, did not see this unmarked fire hose in front of me and walking my usual fast paced, I just went flying like Superman into the concrete and broke a rib. And when I went to the emergency room, they said, oh, it's not broken, it's amazing, but it's not. And so, me being me, I just figured I could go ahead and do the 5K, re 5K race that I had scheduled and signed up to do and paid money for. That would be the very next week. And so I did it, and it was a little kind of bad sore after that race. And so I went to the emergency, or I went to my doctor at that point, and they took another x-ray. And even though he had looked at me a week before, it was poking around in my ribs and saying, oh no, it's not broken, how lucky you are. Then they determined it was broken. So point being is that when you feel so good, your brain doesn't even tell you that maybe something is going on here. And the recovery has been amazing. So I have since run two more 5K races at week seven and week eight. Um, didn't do nearly as great as I usually do. I did not place in either race, which made me sad, but you know, it takes time to recover. Point being is, I'm back to racing at 71 after I broke a rib. And let me just say, I think I broke the rib in part because my stainless steel water bottle was in my gym bag when I did this Superman sprawl on the concrete. And yeah, so still having just a teeny tiny bit of residual pain, not abnormal for somebody who breaks a rib, but I'm still being able to do a 5K race and not even finish last. Um, the last race I did, there were so many people in my age group, like 20, which there normally isn't, and I finished ninth. <laughs> but a middle of the packer, that's what I used to be before I started training and doing all the things that I've been able to do since I have been here in Florida. All right, what else do you have to do? You gotta eat healthy. You gotta focus on the fruits, the vegetables, and the whole foods. My significant other, who I love very much, but he's really into Trader Joe's just open near us, and so he's got boxes and boxes of all these prepared dinners, which, in my opinion, way too high in salt and fat. So try and eat according to what Mother Nature intended, uh, foods in their natural states. And that's going to include just a few easy meal ideas. So just always have some beans made on hand or stick to canned beans. No indication, no research that suggests one is worse than the other, better than the other. Just you need that fiber and it's so important to get that in your diet. We have a fiber deficiency issue in uh, Western culture, not a protein deficiency. So you'll get plenty of protein on a healthy vegan diet. You know, just walk into the grocery store and usually they have all the fruits and vegetables spread out to meet you, blast you in the face so that your mind's eye will be attracted to these healthy kinds of foods. So another tip is always keep some whole grain made on hand. That could be quinoa, it could be brown rice, that's my favorite. So I can just mix the beans and the rice together even though you don't need them to complement each other. Just say something nice to them if you feel that need. But you'll get plenty, again, plenty of protein in all the foods that you eat as long as you're eating the colors of the rainbow, which mother nature intended. But having some whole grain uh, already made in the fridge when you're dashing out the door, don't have time, is a good way to make sure you're getting a balanced diet. I also like to eat millet because it's bright yellow and it makes me not miss butter too much, which really is not a terribly healthy food, vegan or not, um, to be adding to your diet. Although once in a while, if you feel you need to, vegan butters are the way to go. Other things that are real easy are soups. Make them in a big batch so you can freeze some, have some in the fridge after you eat it when it is cooked fresh. 
it's always better that way, tastes better that way, but nutritionally, you're not gonna lose that much by letting it sit a few days in the fridge or even worse, in the freezer. Always good to have these healthy foods on hand so you don't have to make unhealthy choices when you're in a hurry. If I've heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times at the National Senior Games and everywhere else, the key to really staying fit as we age is just to stay active, do something. It doesn't matter what it is, even just walking, walking the dog, walking yourself, putting on some hand weights if you want to uh, get some extra weight-bearing exercise, but again, don't overdo it and tire out your shoulders too much because they tend to get injured more easily as we get older. But you know, you could even work in a little bit of light jog as you're going on your walk. And it's just always increasing that amount of jogging as you feel fit to begin running if that's something you want to do. It's important to keep a record of that. If you want to work with a coach like me, absolutely, I can hold you accountable to the kinds of things that it takes to, as I, I wrote in my book, Vegan Fitness for Mortals, finish without injury. I coached high school girls cross country and I saw the number one thing that the kids would get is male or female would be shin splints. And that's from pounding the pavement uh, even the asphalt or a rubber track. Rubber track is, is obviously much better, but it's just not getting a case of the terrible twos too much too soon. And sometimes working with someone who can keep you on track, every pun intended, will help you in how you speed up your work and make sure that you stay on a safe track to not get injured. It's important to keep your mind sharp, and you can do that certainly by engaging with other people. That's probably my number one activity, no matter how you do it. If you go to a running event, and by the way, all people at races walk, so you'll meet somebody. But you can do things online, like Words with Friends, or Wordle, or you know, if you can find someone to play games with. We have a neighborhood card group of women where I live. So just ways to keep your mind sharp is really important. Getting outside every day if you can. Rain or shine always helps improve your attitude and your mental focus. I can't stress enough how important it is to get a good night's sleep. Now, if you're with someone who likes to cuddle during the night, whether they're awake or not, sometimes you need to take a break from that person just to have your own space to get more solid sleep, to get more REM sleep, uh, which is deep dreamlike sleep and is really important for recovery and restoration. As I've mentioned, staying connected with groups, however you find them, you can go on meetup.com according to whatever interest you have, sailing, cooking, vegan, uh, all these groups are out there and they all do activities and you just have to find your tribe as the expression goes. You know, some of us, like me, have been orphaned for a long time. As the youngest in my family, by a long shot, all of my relatives died many years ago. And so it does force you to reach out and look for your family of choice, your friends, and just make sure you do maintain a positive connection and look for ways to give back. That's always a way to kind of cheer yourself up when you know that you have helped others. In conclusion, I just want to encourage you to find little ways to start to make these improvements, to put a smile on your face, because when you are happy, it does come from the inside. And we have to sometimes, as we age, really struggle but find ways to be connected and to improve our mental attitude and kind of find the humor in life. But getting out in nature is just one way to kind of let it go, no matter what stresses you may have had during the day, and just relax and count the roses and try and be grateful for the positive things that you do have in your life. And if you can't, get there, then don't be afraid to reach out to others to help you get there. If you have some ideas that come to mind as you've been listening to this, please feel free to add them below. And don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. All right, everyone, gotta run.